here. We're doing PFF quarterback rankings. I got to move quickly past that joke before the mental images start to develop. <laughs> All right, too late. <laughs> too late. Uh, let's get into it here. Um, Pop, you got anything you want to say before I kick this thing off? Or no, let's go? roll. Let's right, roll. Let's I think it. we're going we're gonna to do this in chunks, so we're going to give yeah. you a top ten comment because if we go uh, – one at a time, we could be here all night, uh, especially if Dominic starts with his film breakdowns, which we love. But uh, we're going to just give it to you in chunks and then comment where we think it should be different, should be changed. Maybe we'll do our own top ten list later on. We had some controversial pre-production discussion about that. But let's do it. I don't know. We've only done it every off season since inception, but maybe we won't do it this year. Who knows? We'll change it up. We'll change it up. And, you know, I'll take the accountability for talking on a podcast. I know that's not something that you're supposed to do when you're on a podcast. Talking about? Talk a little too much. What are you it's talking right, about? It's good. Hey, let's run it. Tier one, number one, Patrick Mahomes. I like that they put him in a tier of his own. That's number one. Number two, Lamar Jackson. Number three, Joe Burrow. They said this is the elite tier. So you got Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen in that tier. That's two, three, four in that order. Number three, postseason caliber quarterbacks. That's Justin Herbert at five. Dak Prescott at six, Matt Stafford at seven, Aaron Rodgers at eight, Jalen Hurts at nine, CJ Stroud at number 10. That's where we're going to cut it off. Let's discuss. Pop, you can go first. What you got? I want to throw it over to you. What do you think about Lamar at two over your boy Joe Burrow? I mean, Burrow didn't play last year. So this tends to be a running theme. When Burrow doesn't play, the Ravens are amazing and Lamar is really good and, and the world, you know, that tends to be a running theme here. If Burrow plays last year, I mean, look, I'm not taking anything away from what Lamar did last year. That would be ignorant of me. That would be stupid. You all know the Ravens aren't my favorite team in the world, but I can't – uh, the guy was unbelievable last year. You can't take anything away from him. You can't argue that somebody should be higher than him at this point other than Pat Mahomes. And who knows? I mean, if he wins the, if he beats Mahomes in the AFC Championship and wins the Super Bowl, maybe we're having an even more interesting discussion right now, or there's more discussion points. But you just you can't take it away from him. I do think Burrow, obviously being hurt, and Allen had down years last year. I don't know that you'd say overall you'd put Lamar too, but you can't take that away from him after what he did last year, and you have to expect it's going to continue with the new offensive coordinator and what they've been doing down in Baltimore. Yeah, I, I like this top four. I think it's pretty much spot on. Maybe even top five, taking it down to Justin Herbert. Um, I like the respect that Lamar's given, no doubt. We don't even yeah. have to talk about who's number one with Pat. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I like it. I, I'm not, you know, I think as you get into six to, to ten, it gets a little interesting. Dak Prescott, number six. Ahead of Jalen Hurts at number nine is interesting to me. I don't, I think I'd probably be tempted to flip those two. I, how many Super Bowls to talk about led the Cowboys to? Well, it's the same kind of conversation that we're having about Lamar, right? We're talking about if we're weighing in what they did last year, what we expect to happen this year coming up. Dak over 18 games was better than Hertz was last year. I mean, Hertz never caught his stride last year. He never got back to what he was the year prior. Um, and Hertz, we were talking hurt. about it. He was we talking right, but that happened later in the season. He never. I remember you could watch. Nah, he was hurt. He was hurt earlier in the year. He you was. Could, he's hobbled a couple of different times sure, through the year. Sure. He yeah. was and that was the same kind of situation with Herbert, right? Herbert only ended up missing the last five games of the year, but he was playing with a broken finger on his throwing hand almost the whole year. So, you know, something to just kind of factor in there. But I, I think Dak, when you factor in the way the Eagles just collapsed after week eleven, I mean, how can you not rank Dak above Jalen Hurts? That's what did they, what'd the Cowboys do? The Cowboys still won 12 games and were better over the course of the season. Probably they got look to the playoffs. That was – I hate to say it because he's coaching our football team now, but that was the defense. Well, Dak didn't play well, 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 Dak you know. didn't play well down the stretch either. Um, no, and how did Philly look in the playoffs? So you, 
So you think Dak's a better quarterback than Jalen Hurts? I just want you to go on the record with that. I think Dak had a better year than Jalen Hurts last year, and I think the difference. No, but we're not. Is, but that's not the question. If I could answer your question, I think Dak had a better year than Jalen Hurts last year, and I think the difference between the two of them overall is narrow enough that I don't mind putting Dak ahead of him at this point. Well, here's what I think. If I'm going to go through it, right? I think Matt Stafford is a much better quarterback than Dak Prescott. I got to see him live last year. Doesn't stay healthy. So if you're going to knock him for not being on the field enough, I understand that. But when he's healthy and he's on the field, there's no question to me that he should be a little further up this list. Aaron Rodgers, to me, is a wild card at number eight. Like, we just yeah, don't know. Tough. what It's we're like getting. a respect play putting him up there, right? You have to expect that if he is healthy, he's going to be a really good player. But there's a lot going on with it. The, there's got a lot going on with the Jets. Um, what do we think about C.J. Stroud cracking the top ten? I think this is With low that? for C.J. Stroud. Where would you I think put this him? Is, I would add him at six. Wow. After How one can, year. Yeah. I would add him at six. After that year. How can you – who would you rather start a football team with tomorrow? C.J. Stroud, Dak Prescott, Matt Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts. You're taking Stroud with all those He's got C.J. Stroud. That's a little bit different of question. Who would you rather win a to football To me, this game is more tomorrow? about who do you want you to lead your team in 2024 as an isolated year. But certainly, yeah, if you, if you, if you ask it that way, you're 100% right. You know, when I look at the I guys – I think if you ask it that way, the only person I may take over him is Stafford. Yeah. So maybe seven, but sorry, continue. No, that's it. I was going right. good. Let's go cool. for let's 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 get through uh, eleven through twenty. This is another guy. <laughs> another guy I, I probably would have put in my top ten is Jordan Love at number eleven. Um, and then you got him at eleven. You got Trevor Lawrence at twelve. You got Brock Purdy at thirteen. Tua at fourteen. Uh, Kirk Cousins at fifteen. Jared Goff, 16, Kyler Murray, 17, Geno Smith, 18, Caleb Williams, 19. And that whole group was in one tier titled the melting pot of starters. Um, so I guess these are like distinct, clear NFL starters and guys that you can win with, but maybe not the top of the top. Um, and then you've got Baker Mayfield leading off tier five, which is can single-handedly win and lose games. So I think that's a kind of a funny title for yeah. that here, but we'll we'll talk about that more later. This is a weird grouping pop. Um, do you want me to go first, or you want to go first here? If you got to take, go for it. I got to take. I got love in that top ten um, for sure. Who do you take out? Rogers. Ooh. Rogers at eleven because you don't know what you're going to get, and he was bad in Green Bay his last year in Green Bay. He was bad. He had back-to-back -back MVP seasons, and then he sucked, and then he tore his Achilles, and now he's going to be 40. So, yeah, that's 11. I, I, think. I don't think he was bad. I think he was not Aaron. He wasn't elite. There's a little yeah. bit of a difference. Well, it, it wasn't an Aaron Rodgers type year. He, they won like he also didn't have weapons. Games. Yeah, he wasn't – he wasn't bad, maybe, but he wasn't, he wasn't bad. good either. He was like very middle of the road that year, very average. Um, I think this is about right for Trevor Lawrence and Brock Purdy. Tua, I would put Tua above. Actually, no, I wouldn't. This is right, right for Tua as well. Kirk, I think you have to put him there, assuming he gets healthy. He's been good. I think this is low for Goff, though. I think yeah, that that, it's that a stood out, that, that like stood that. out to me. That stood out to me too. I think it's a little yeah. bit low for him. I mean, the this is the sentence that I I really hate about the golf evaluation is that unfortunately golf's play under pressure and outside of structure continues to leave a lot to be desired when compared to other top NFL quarterbacks. He's not an outside of structure guy. That's not what golf does. That's not his game. So why are we knocking him for something that's not his game? Kirk Cousins sucks out of structure too. Yeah, so we've never so, knocked him for that. Like, what are we doing? So my comments are this: I disagree with your Jordan Love take. I got to see a little more. Maybe if I see him do it in one more season, I'd be with you about him being top ten. I think he's, yeah, I think he's generously placed at number eleven there, based on what I've seen. I agree. I would probably put Jared Groff at the top of this next group. He should be up there at eleven, twelve. Um, I, I think it's disrespectful. 
I think, you know, I think it's interesting. I feel like they've kind of copped out here a little bit with this call and melting plot of starters and putting 10 names there. I, I feel like, I, I feel like a Jordan Love, uh, uh, a golf deserve a little bit more respect on their name than being said they're just in a melting pot with all these other guys. Um, you never know, like, like, you know, guys like Kyler and Tua certainly are super talented. Yeah. Um, you know, if they can just stay on the field, they, they could definitely climb this list. You know, um, Brock Purdy has played extremely well. Um, I guess I'm good with him being in that round 15 range. If he does it again this year, then, you know, we got to go f- get away from having doubts there and start to become believers. And, you know, I know I'm a little bit more of a doubter than you are. Um, yeah. It's an interesting group. I-, I feel like more of the melting pot guys are, you know, guys like Gino, uh, Kyler. Um, I don't think I'd call Kirk a melting pot guy if he's healthy. He's been of better than not. That. no. He's been no, better he's, than that. If he's healthy, right? you're putting him top ten, right? Well, he's he's I, I kind of like think there should be a ten to twelve, you know, ten to fourteen group that I is, agree. is separated from these melting pot guys. I just think it's uh you know, I, I think they've they've they're, they're you know, not the nitpick PFF, they do a great job. We leverage them often. But I would I would have come up with a different tier for for a few of these guys the the Jordan Laws the Trevor Lawrence's the Jared Goffs the Kirk Cousins I think I would have did but I think the other interesting thing here is Kayla Williams at 19 so you got a rookie you never seen play before it's hard you know the way they did this is they they picked one quarterback from each team to make up their top 32 so it's logical but. You know, they're, they're basically saying they think Chicago's got the 19th best quarterback room. You know, that could easily be top 10. Um, he could struggle in year one, which doesn't mean he won't eventually climb the ranks. Um, that's kind of throwing like a, a dart with a blindfold a little bit. I mean, you know, obviously he's tremendous talent. Um, but I think I'm okay with it. I think I'm okay with it. Just because yeah. of the weapons he has, and I think he's set up for for success there. Yeah, um, I'm fine with it. Uh, I think we're talking about somebody that you want to say we've never seen this type of talent come into the league before. Um, so sure, put him, at, put him at 19. That's fine with me. My bigger problem, I agree with your melting pot take. How are you going to put Geno Smith next to Brock Purdy and put them in the same group? I'm sorry. I think that's ridiculous. I think Geno Smith has been solid. Brock has taken his team to the Super Bowl. What, twice now? Like, yeah. you you have to have a serious conversation about Brock Purdy. I think he does it again this year. He plays this year like he played last year. You're putting him up next to Justin Herbert in that top 10 group. I think you're really, you really got to have a conversation about this kid. It's like what I said about golf. He doesn't run and throw the ball like this behind his back like Mahomes does. But he makes every single play exactly how he's supposed to make it. And he played a great Super Bowl. He played a great Super Bowl. He was one stupid missed extra point away from Super Bowl MVP last year. He played a great Super Bowl. So I, I can't. I'm not completely sold on Brock. I can't do the. I'm fine if you don't want to say you're not sold on him being an elite talent. But I agree with, but, your, I agree with your take related to Geno. Yeah. yeah, I think Gino is a, a good player, a solid player. There are only 32 of these jobs. You know, there's only five, what is it, five we'd consider elite. Um, yeah. Less than that. So, you know, he's, he's definitely deserving. And I think, he's a guy, I think he's a guy you can win with. They've proven that. But he's not really going to be the reason you win. Yeah. You know? And um, I think he's kind of more of a placeholder in Seattle for a couple of years to really figure out who that QB of the future would be. Um, so, yeah, I, I like your take there. Let's get – now, I mean, the least exciting group, except for one name, is this 21 to 32 group. But maybe we talk about who we think – is there anyone in this group we think should should be rated higher than they currently are? Yeah. So we got 20, Baker Mayfield, 21, Derek Carr, 22, Russell Wilson. Oh, 
23, Deshaun Watson. 24, Anthony Richardson. That's crazy. 25, Bryce Young. 26, Jacoby Brissett. 27, Jaden Daniels. 28, Will Levis. And that is that group, I guess. Do you want to go to 30? Yeah, I think, I think it's group? probably important to kind of mention tiers yeah. here in terms of how they rank this out. Like, so, I don't know, tier five is the Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. They can win or single handedly win or lose games. I guess, you know, they're guys that, that yeah. can have their moments and have their really good games. But I guess just haven't shown that consistency uh, through a season. And, and, you know, I don't know if there's any of this group you think is misplaced. Is there anyone here you think is misplaced? No. I mean, I think Carr is way too high. I think you put Carr down with the holdovers. Carr sucks, man. Carr is yeah, just man. not. Carr yeah, is like what people used to criticize Kirk Cousins is what Derek Carr is. Derek yeah. Carr will play the worst first half you've ever seen. His team will go down 21, and then he'll put up 250 yards and two touchdowns and an interception in the second half, and they will still lose. That's what Derek Carr does. I had Chris yeah. Olave on my fantasy team last year. I watched every New Orleans Saints game I could possibly watch, and it sucked. It sucked. He is he's a bad quarterback, man. I think that's crazy to put him that high. I think Russ Wilson is too high. Um but that's 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 my take on that for that grouping. Um, yeah, that yeah, grouping. I think of that group, I, I kinda I think Baker's probably probably performed the best last year. Um Agreed. Yeah, I agree with you taking their car. Russell Wilson is just a build, big wild card. We haven't seen anything out of him the last couple of years. He might not even be a starter in Pittsburgh. Yeah. As we get, you know, I mean, I think it was, as we get into the season, um, Deshaun's an interesting one. I mean, you know, obviously he's had tons of trouble. Um, I don't know. Still a great talent there and was – was a top five quarterback at one point. So he's an interesting one to see if he's ever able to get it back or there's just been too much damage done. But this next tier, starting with 24, um, you know, through, through, I guess, 28, um, which just to recap is Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young, uh, Drake May, Jacoby Brissett combo, Jaden Daniels, and Will Levis. They do say that that's like the next generation. So yeah. you know, this is a group that you're just waiting and seeing what what are they? How are they going to perform? Or say our guy Jaden Daniels is in there at 28, 27. I guess they're ranking the combination of Jacoby and Drake May ahead of him. Not sure. I I, I like that, but uh, you know, I, I'm not going to rant and rave about where Jaden Daniels is on the list. I you. hope he's I low as possible because I just want him to have a chip and, you know, go out there and perform and continue to be what he's been in terms of, you know, proving himself. So um, what what do you say about that ranking of Jaden Daniels? I don't care. I don't care. I, I'm not uh, – I, I think ranking rookie quarterbacks before they play NFL staffs is stupid, and I think if you're going to do it, you rank them in the order that they were picked, and Drake May clearly there's a there's a large discrepancy between him and Daniel. So I think it's crazy you put May ahead of that, and then you put the little slash Jacoby Brissett cop in there. Who Jacoby was good in Washington in the couple of flashes where he got the start last year, but let's call it what it is. He's a perennial top of the league backup, bottom of the league starter guy. Um, yeah, I think Jaden should be at the top of this list. You know what? I am a little irritated. I think he should be at the top of this next generation list. Wherever right. you're going to slot that list in. And I'm agree with you. Throw Derek Carr out of there. So I think that Jaden should be number 23 on this list. Uh, okay. I'll give you pushback on one guy. This is my boy, Anthony Richardson. Will Levis. Oh, Anthony, Anthony Richardson, Richardson is way too low. To put Anthony Richardson 24 and Bryce Young – Anthony Richardson, who for the four games that he got to play looked electric, and Bryce Young, who played 17 games of some of the worst quarterbacking we've ever seen in the NFL, to put them right next to each other? But let me ask you this question in a different way, okay? Let's stick to our boy, Jaden Daniels. Got to give a little love there. You're redrafted. 
Anthony Richardson is a prospect in this year's draft, right? Everything you know about him. You drafted him ahead of Jaden Daniels at number two. Mm. Jaden Daniels is a better prospect. Jaden Daniels is a much better, much more refined pocket passer than an Anthony Richardson. Not taking anything away from how dynamic Anthony Richardson looked and the path he could take, but he is much further behind in his development as a passer. And Jaden Daniels, every bit the runner, and can be every bit the runner than Anthony Richardson. Jaden Daniels should be higher on this list from a from a prospect perspective. Mm. Tell me I'm wrong. You'd pick Anthony Richardson ahead of Jaden Daniels. I don't know. I've never had to make that decision before. I don't I think what you saw from Anthony Richardson in the league last year was I just think he's getting underrated. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't know that you pick him over Jaden Daniels when they put the two of them next to each other because you picked – I mean, Stroud He's still a prospect. Be, he only played a few games. He sparked, but he only played a few games. Looked really great and kind of didn't – A Coach lot of the proved to be a pretty good team. Sure, but you can only play on the team that you've been drafted to. I'm kind of not a huge fan of that thinking either. But it's – yeah, I don't know. You probably take Jaden. You probably take Jaden. Definitely would take Jaden. I'm, I'm happy with my guy. That's all I care about. I don't care about if Anthony Richardson stayed another they year. They could both be really good players. Yeah, I think. That's the I point. think. I think. You know. I think there's a chance that we're looking at these guys both 10, 15 spots higher on the list this time next year. Um, right next to each other. I'm a. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of. Put your hand up on the screen. Okay. There it is. There it is. A little I only care about one of the two, by the way. That my yeah. my prayers was just for Well yeah, Jayden I mean Dan. as long as Jaden pans <laughs> out, I, I could kind of care less. Although I might be drafting, I have a dynasty draft cover up in a little bit here. I might be drafting Anthony Richardson. Um see how that turns out. But Man, son. Pump the yeah, brakes, son. We've got That's uh we've, we've got in tier seven here the holdovers. These guys suck. You got Daniel Jones, Aiden <laughs> O'Connell, Garner Minshew, Sam Darnold, J.J. McCarthy, Jarrett Stenham, Bo Nix. <sighs> I, I don't even want to talk about it, man. I don't care. No. Um, I don't no, care. I, I, this I, is kind of the whatever. I mean, you still yeah. – you know, 31 and 32, you got J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix lumped in there. There's yeah. A lot of, especially J.J. McCarthy. There's so much positive talk about him and – Rumor has it he was our – if it wasn't Jaden Daniels, it was J.J. Um, it's interesting to see that those guys aren't kind of lumped into that, you know, that next generation group. But Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I mean, I, I don't love the, com- the combining of, like, veteran that kind of sucks with rookie that we don't know that much about. I don't love doing that on this list. Um, but that's, that's fine. Uh, Daniel Jones is just clearly a guy that was never going to be a good NFL starter. And I just kind of want to take a victory lap on that because, you know, they took him ahead of Dwayne Haskins and then the Dwayne thing didn't pan out and Daniel Jones had a half decent year and everybody wanted to say, Oh, look, the Giants were right. They were so smart. No, Daniel Jones also still stinks. And unfortunately, God rest his soul. Haskins was a product of his environment. As much as it was a uh, a football oh, I, issue, I, I, but. I stick I stick my my prediction on Daniel Jones. He is not gonna he's gonna get pulled for performance within the first half of the season. Yeah, you have to start him because he you signed him to that terrible deal. But I don't think I mean I don't know what his injury situation is if he's going to be healthy to start the year. But I mean. With quarterbacks, right? The best ability is availability. He's never available, available, and he's a bad football player. So yeah. why is he still? I don't know. I think he'll be cooked. I think we'll see Drew Lock. I agree. I say we wrap this thing up, Pop. How you feeling? Nah, it was a lot of fun. It always yeah. has to break down these quarterbacks, and we'll come back with our top ten list just for Dominic. Maybe we'll, we'll do we'll do this in the future, Pop. We'll do top ten, and then we're going to rank the next generation guys because that's where the interesting thing is. So how would there we rank go. the top 10 quarterbacks and then year one and year two guys, we're going to do a top five or top 10, whatever number makes sense for those guys too. Got I already feeling. know 
Number five is going to be at the top of my list. We'll yeah, see. I already know me and Pop going to be fighting about that next generation list. But that's all good. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Up. Sounds like a good time. I think hey, you might see us pull that out soon if the uh, June news cycle keeps going. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Dom and Pop pre-production meeting. Let's wrap this thing up before we do it. I've been Dom. This is Pop. Thanks for another great week, everybody. Baby.